Hey travelers, Mag, I, and about a dozen of our friends here from the Texas Geocaching Association on day 190 of our trip around the United States. Today, we are going to be spending all day in Houston. We have no miles to cover whatsoever. We're gonna take the day at our own pace, spend it with some of our great new geocaching friends here, and enjoy what the city has to offer. There are about a dozen virtuals in the downtown area and that is our primary target. But we're getting the day started off here at a CETO event and with some delicious donuts. After we finish cleaning up this park, only then are we gonna make our way into downtown Houston and go start working our way through the virtuals. But for now, let's go explore Collins Park and live a great story. Come on, let's do it. We are here at the mm, mm, mm Donuts event with Texas Gover Fan as the host. Everybody's sitting around the table discovering trackables, and we have a bunch of donuts here for us to enjoy. So we're gonna dig in and have a great breakfast and then go clean up a park. Here we go. Going back and I've only done donuts one time on this trip since it started. Skeletor 10 talked me into it in Texas, so. Mm, could not be any better right now. After enjoying some donuts, we made our way over to Collins Park in Precinct 3. And the very first thing that we noticed coming into the park is the brand new Veterans War Memorial that was just unveiled in November of 2023. This memorial features six eight-foot tall monuments made of granite material, each honoring a branch of the U.S. military, including the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Space Force, and Coast Guard. Only after taking the time to check out this brand new Veterans Memorial did we start to make our way into this 55 acre park. The CETO crew, that's cash in, trash out crew, wasted no time loading up with bags, buckets, and grabbers before spreading out through the park searching for trash. And I am happy to report that this is one of the cleaner parks that I have ever helped to clean up. So it was actually a bit of a struggle for us to even fill our bags with trash. And wouldn't you know it, a brand new publication while we're out here cleaning the trails. If I didn't know any better, I'd almost think somebody planned this one. So we're gonna find this thing, and one of us, me, is gonna claim the first to find. No, nah, I'm, I'm just kidding, they're giving me murderous looks right now. We'll, we'll share this first to find. Hey YouTube! And we got a brand new geocacher who just, when did you start geocaching? I started geocaching on November 13th, 2021. So he started at the end of the pandemic. He's a couple years into the game right now and having a great time of it out here showing us how it's done. I bet you he's gonna be the one to find this geocache. I'm gonna stop distracting him. Let's get this thing. Squid kid out. <laughs> and look at that. First to find, nailed it. First nice one of 2024. Woohoo! Oh, Fresh name on the log. Miss Pat taking care of business. The Saito crew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the Saito crew has more geocaches than anybody in the world. They <laughs> <laughs> found all of them. Yeah. And don't worry, nobody saw us struggling to open up that container. We're good. <laughs> Ten minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> minions Look at this favorite. tiny little thing. Now that. That is a tough find. It's a good thing there are more experienced geocachers than me ready to find these things. Because me, I'd still be over here looking. Winter Thanks for helps. that. No <laughs> so we've been out here walking the trails, enjoying a great time running through first to finds and catching up with some folks that know each other and some folks we get to meet. And Yatekeeper has come out to join us. This is actually his very first geocaching event. So how great to be able to come out and join the Texas Geocaches Association, get to clean up a park, and get to go get some first to finds along the way. So when did you start geocaching? Uh, well, I first started when I was uh, maybe 10 or 11 with my dad, and then I found his old GPS in a drawer. Okay. I pulled it out, figured I'd give it a shot, so I've been back in it about a year. Back in the game for a year, and that must have been what, 10? 2011, 2010, somewhere in there. Okay, so yeah, about 12 years ago. Yep. So, he found some geocaches a good long while ago, and now he's back in the game, out on the trails, having fun with us out here. Yep. Gatekeeper, we are glad to have you in the game with us. Yep, thank you. And now we're following behind the CETO crew. They're doing all the hard work for us while we kind of linger in the back. I'm getting a chance to learn Singing Marmot's story here, too. And as far as I'm concerned, like Geo Killian we met in Michigan, he is the future of this game. You excited to be out here? Yes, I am. What are some of the best things you like about geocaching? I like how it brings people together and that it 
lets you enjoy nature when you're outside. What better way to get to enjoy nature than being out in the park and cleaning up, right? Yeah, and that also represents the scout oath and law as well. A scout is clean. Is this your first time being on a YouTube channel for geocaching? Yes. Well, I'm glad that Sing Marmot will have his debut right here because you'll be seeing him in the game for years to come. Thanks for being out here with us. You're welcome. That is what a victory looks like. Well done, my man. Thank you. You need a Sharpie? Uh, I got a pen that's so red. Find the that's C I T O. <laughs> now that you took the wet way in to make that fine for us, we'll take the dry way out. As it always goes in this game, we take the hardest way possible to get to the geocache and then the easiest way possible to get back from it because that's when you discover the trail. Which, by the way, across all that water is right here nice and dry. Look at that. would be a good one without it. Sure, I'm glad he decided to wade through that water though. I don't know if we were going to make that find without him. We have had a fantastic time geocaching our way around Collins Park and, much more importantly, finding a bunch of geocaches as we went. But this is the last remainders of the crew. We found everything there is to find in the park, and now it's time to go to downtown Houston. Miss Pat's gonna join along for the adventure, and we're gonna move our way through one virtual to the next. So prepare to get to see downtown Houston up close. Welcome to the city of Houston, the single most populated city in the state of Texas, with around 2.3 million people living here. And it's not just big for Texas. This is the fourth most populated city in the entire U.S. behind New York, L.A., and Chicago. What better place to start working our way through the virtuals in the downtown area than in Minute Maid Park, also known as the Juice Box. Opened in 2000 as the ballpark of Major League Baseball's Houston Astros, this stadium has a seating capacity of just over 40,000. It replaces the aged-out Astrodome, which had first opened its doors to the public in 1965. Next up to bat, we slide our way into Herman Square within the Theater District. Occupying a full city block within the heart of downtown, this square serves as the forecourt to the Houston City Hall. Above the reflection pool, an elevated entry plaza leads to the front doors of City Hall. Ornamented with carved limestone seats, benches, and flanked on both sides by flagpoles on limestone pediments. Just around the corner from City Hall, you can visit the Buffalo Bayou Park Cistern, former drinking water reservoir built in 1926 for the city of Houston. At one point, this spot featured a periscope that allowed you to view down into the cistern, but it seems that it is long gone. Nevertheless, there are still plenty of views to enjoy from the top of the cistern, looking out over the city spread out in front of you. Following the Buffalo Bayou West past Eleanor Tinsley Park along the Greenbelt, you'll find the Houston Police Department Memorial. This piece of public art was erected in 1991 in the center of the green space to recognize the sacrifices made by city police officers and honor those who have lost their lives in the line of duty. If you are able to make the climb to the apex of the pyramid, you will find a pink granite reflecting pool with the names of over 100 of those officers who had been killed in the line of duty engraved within. Like any good locals tour, the virtuals led us to some rather interesting sites, including the beer can house made of over 50,000 cans. Then we came to visit the Orange Show, an even odder attraction in a neighborhood of single small story homes, an out of place cacophony of sculptures and junk turned into folk art. Inspired by the Orange Show, visionary artist and builder Dan Phillips worked alongside the late Stephanie Smither to design Smither Park in the memory of her husband, John Smither. Taking a page out of the Orange Show's book and carrying on the philosophy of promoting and sustaining self-taught art, over 300 artists have contributed permanent mosaic masterpiece to this park. It serves as a testimony to the vibrancy and creativity of the city of Houston. And in addition to having a great geocache here, there is also an adventure lab stage hidden by none other than Miss Pat who escorted me around town today. This is a great place to bring family, friends, and loved ones for picnics, gatherings, relaxations, and of course, geocaching. All right, travelers, that is the end to a fantastic day spent in Houston. We woke up this morning, and the first thing we did is go get some donuts at the donut event. Mm -hmm, mm, that was good. Then we headed on over to the cash-in trash-out event, 
we met up with a bunch of local geocachers and cleaned the park. While we were there, new geocaches published. It's almost like that was planned. And we got to get a bunch of first to finds while we were out there cleaning up the park. Once that was over, Miss Pat offered to give me the local store of downtown Houston area, and we have been moving our way through downtown from one virtual to the next, enjoying all the sites the downtown area has to offer and getting a taste of Houston. Miss Pat, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a fantastic time out here geocaching in the local area. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Quite and welcome. The Texas Geocaching Association has gone above and beyond to give me an opportunity to attend events and to get me local geocaches like yourself. You're I welcome. appreciate it so much. Anytime. So what did you think about getting to do the CEDO event with all those people today? <laughs> oh, that's uh, something we do every month. Every month. Every and month. You, you have weekly events in the city as well. We do. Local taverns. Yes. The event yes. icons are all over the map here yes. in Houston. Yes. Yes. So uh, we always get out-of-towners, out-of-staters, out-of-international travelers, yes. And so um, this is one of the parks that we really like to bring people to. And Smither Park is a really cool park <laughs> to come check out. Right now there are people around us with scavenger hunt pads in their hand, and they're moving their way through the park looking for different items. And there is so much detail work here to see. You could spend hours looking at all the local ponces here. Thank you guys for joining us. Like this video. Subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails. Out on the trails.